In this video, I'm going to give you guys a few things to keep in mind, a few things you should know if you're planning to visit Buenos Aires soon. Quick disclaimer, I did a video similar to this. I think it was called Seven Things No One Told Me About Buenos Aires. And I touched on a few things such as how here they party late, they eat late. And so those same items I'm not going to talk about in this video because I don't want to sound too repetitive and say the same things. However, at the end of this video, I'll post a pop-up for those who just want to know a little bit more about this place. That being said, again, this video is just going to touch on a few things some of you guys should know, especially if you're planning a trip here and next year during the spring and summertime, you want to come check it out and see how it is. The first thing you should know is about the weather. In some places, they pretty much only have two seasons, hot and hotter or dry and wet. Well, here in Buenos Aires, from what I understand, they have all four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter. So make sure that you check the weather before planning your trip to Buenos Aires. That can play a major role whether you have a good time here or not. Case in point, when I first arrived, it was fall, the sun was out, the climate was temperate. At night, it was a little chilly, but nothing serious, and it was great. My last week here in Buenos Aires, it's been cold, a little chilly, and honestly, I haven't felt like doing anything. I just want to stay home, drink some wine, order some food, order delivery, and just relax. Next up on the list are the plugs and outlets, which are different from the ones in the U.S., and the majority of people who watch me are from the U.S. So here's a picture of what they look like. This is why, and some of you guys who keep up with my videos, you already know what I'm going to recommend. And that is a universal travel adapter. If you plan to travel, especially if you plan to travel frequently, internationally, it's always good to have one of these. So you're always plugged in. These travel adapters will allow you to connect your devices in practically the majority of countries. You can purchase one of these, I'm sure, at Walmart, Best Buy, an electronic store, or simply order one off of Amazon. Keep in mind, you do not need the latest and greatest. As long as it's a universal adapter, you'll be just fine. Choose the one that's within your budget. In my case, for example, I just ordered this one because it was affordable and it looked pretty sturdy. And also it has some uh, USB outlets on the sides. That was great if you want to plug multiple devices at the same time. Next up, let's talk about the currency slash money situation here. In short, Argentina is going through a currency inflation problem. So much so that you're able to receive double the exchange rate for your U.S. dollar. This new exchange rate is called the, uh, I believe it's called the blue dollar rate. From what I understand, there are two popular ways to make this exchange. One, you can head downtown and I believe the street is called uh, Florida Street. And as you walk by, you'll hear people say, cambio, 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 you know, exchange, exchange, exchange. And you can walk up to them, negotiate a price, and they'll give you around the blue dollar rate. The second way, which I think is probably safer, would be to send yourself money. Now, there are multiple money transfer services, but the one that's most recommended, the one that I hear the most, is Western Union. If you send yourself money through Western Union, you'll receive near the blue dollar rate. Now, obviously, for this service, they charge a fee, but at the end of the day, when you're getting close to double the amount, that makes up for the fees that they charge. And again, I'm sure many people don't want to fly into the country with a whole bunch of U.S. dollars, nor do they want to go out onto the street and have to negotiate and possibly risk receiving fake bills or having any other problems. You can pay with credit card if you want. You can pull out cash from the ATM, but you will not be receiving the the double rate, the blue dollar rate. And this is one of the reasons why you may hear the, the phrase, you know, cash is king in Argentina. And this is another reason why your trip to Argentina can be expensive or inexpensive. And this is gonna be dependent upon how you exchange your cash. This next point is in regard to the atmosphere here. Now, if you're someone who's never been to South America or maybe you haven't traveled much of South America, you may think that the majority of the Spanish speaking countries on this continent are all the same. They all speak the same language. They have the same culture. They all dance salsa. And if anything, all their foods are the same except maybe one or two dishes. Well, you'd be sadly mistaken. Obviously, yes, there are similarities, especially with the language and certain customs. 
However, once you stay longer, you'll realize there are some major differences. In Argentina, you're going to have more of that European vibe. And I think a main reason why is because of the influx of immigrants that came here back in the day. I want to say a large portion from Spain and Italy. Obviously, they had other uh, groups of peoples that, that came out here, but a huge part came from, from those two areas. And so you're going to see that influence here, not only in the architecture, but also in the people and the food the scenery, just the vibe out here. I also believe, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the reasons why the, the their dialect or their accent here is the way it is. From what I've been told, they have somewhat of like an Italian accent going with the mixed in with the Spanish, like the double L makes the shh sound. So instead of pollo, they say pollo. And it kind of throws me off sometimes, but you get used to it after a while. The next point I'm going to bring up, and this should be pretty interesting, maybe a little controversial. If you're from Argentina, let me know uh, your perspective on this. But before coming here, I heard that tango, the dance, was super popular. And because of that, I assumed it would have been similar to some of the other countries I've been to. In some places, all you hear is salsa everywhere in the stores, the buses, supermarkets. In others, you hear bachata blasted everywhere from people's homes. When I was in Mexico, all I heard was banda. You know, I heard some salsa, but banda, banda, banda. So I assumed when I touched down in Argentina, all I was going to hear was tango everywhere. But that wasn't really the case. And I've heard mixed reviews. From what I understand... Tango is popular, but I don't think it's a thing where on a Friday or Saturday night, most people are saying, oh, let's hurry up and eat. Let's go grab something to drink so we can go watch this tango. Uh, I just, I don't think that's really the case. If anything, I would say rock and reggaeton, and obviously you have some other, some other genres, but rock and reggaeton are huge out here. I also heard that outside of Buenos Aires, tango isn't really a, a huge thing. So for those from the country, go ahead and let me know in the comment section if I have that right, if I'm wrong, and, and break it down. Last but not least, we have the food. Now, I will say this city is huge. It's cosmopolitan. There's like, I'm not even gonna say the number, but there's a ton of millions of people here. So, do they have healthy eateries here where you can have some vegetables every once in a while? Yes. But I still would say that meats are the, the, the way of life here. And because of that, I don't think this is one of the more vegan, vegetarian friendly cities. It, it's just not the case. I think I went a week and a half without eating much vegetables and I was, I was feeling it. I was like, man, I need to, I just need to have a salad right now, which is one of the reasons why I started eating more Asian food because they at least have some greens sprinkled into their, to their meals and stir fries. But yeah, if you come out here, be prepared to not eat a lot of vegetables. And there we have it. Those are a few things that you should know before visiting Buenos Aires, a few things to keep in mind. Remember that these aren't all of them. I also spoke on a few other points in another video. I'm going to link that some towards the end of this one. But if you're planning a visit to this place soon, I hope that this has helped you. I hope you have found some value in the video. And I'll go ahead and end it right here and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Deuces.